So I know how much you love the unbiased science. So let's go ahead and talk about CLA, conjugated linoleic acid today. I'm gonna to give you a neutral, unbiased breakdown that really allows you to make the decision based upon peer reviewed studies, scholarly articles, and the honest research behind CLA. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also make sure you turn on notifications so you can see whenever I go live or whenever I post a video and never miss a beat. So what exactly is CLA? CLA stands for conjugated linoleic acid, and technically CLA is considered a trans fat. But if you've watched my other videos, then you know that not all trans fats are really created equal. We have biological trans fats, natural trans fats, and we have artificial trans fats. So they're not all bad. They're not all good either. Now when we look at conjugated linoleic acid, it's technically an omega-6 fatty acid. And again, if you've seen my other videos, you know that omega-6s are only good in moderation because omega-6s can actually trigger inflammation. But I want you to hear me out through the entirety of this video because sometimes the right amount of inflammation can actually trigger a good thing like positive fatty acid oxidation. You see, so naturally CLA comes from the rumen of pasture-raised animals. Now what that means is animals that generally have multiple stomachs. So we're talking about cows, we're talking about things like that. Okay, now the rumen is the intestines or part of the digestive tract. So conjugated linoleic acid is a naturally occurring trans fat that is in that portion of the animal. So as you can imagine, when an animal is harvested, there's not a whole lot of CLA that comes out of it. You see, you don't get this copious amount like you would any other kind of fat. So it's really kind of a precious commodity, and we don't need much in the body to trigger the right kind of thing. Like I've talked about in other videos, you only need a small amount of omega-6s to get the job done. Now, technically, it's what's called a polyunsaturated fat. Now, polyunsaturated fats are very, very unstable. But through the biological process of hydrogenation, of them becoming a trans fat, they can become somewhat more healthy and a little bit more stable. And that's sort of the case with CLA. Now here's what we have to remember. Naturally occurring CLA is a good thing. The supplements that we take that are CLA are totally different. And there's something that we have to understand when we start to talk about this. And it's a very in-depth science, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it in a blanket statement and give you sort of the Cliff Notes version of it. When we look at fats, we have specific codes. Okay, there is almost what I'd like to call a fat code. Okay, we look at the carbon chains and how a fatty acid is made up, and we see multiple carbon chains. Okay, now within those chains, we have what are called CIS, cis bonds, and we have what are called trans bonds. Okay, now the amount of these bonds doesn't really matter right now. All that matters is the sequence of where these different cis bonds and trans bonds occur. All that you need to know is that our bodies have an ability to interpret and translate and ultimately digest a specific fat code. And if we alter that fat code through a chemical or artificial process, we're restructuring where these cis bonds and these trans bonds are, therefore making it more difficult for the body to process. So when we're looking at naturally occurring CLA, we're usually looking at a very specific trans and cis bond makeup. But when we look at CLA supplements that are derived from sunflower and safflower oil, mind you, two very pro-inflammatory, not very good omega-6 fatty acids, we have a completely different makeup. You see, for example, natural trans fats are usually a CIS9 trans 11, meaning within that fat code, the cis bond is on the ninth carbon chain and the trans bond is on the 11th carbon chain. Then when we look at artificial, man-made CLA supplements that aren't coming from an animal source, the trans bond is usually at the 10th molecule and the cis bond is at the 12th. Now, that sounds like crazy talk, but all it means is separate fat codes, okay? So what really matters? What really matters when it comes down to the CLA supplement? Why would we wanna take this in the first place? Well, a lot of the research has just started to show that there are modest decreases in weight and there's modest increases in fatty acid oxidation when you're utilizing CLA. But one thing that we truly need to understand is that it's heavily marketed. Okay, CLA is just one of these things that's promoted as a healthy fat simply because marketers start to run out of different things to talk about. So you see CLA kind of go through these ebbs and flows in popularity. So what I wanna do now is I wanna give you a couple of studies that are gonna give you an honest, neutral breakdown. This first study was published in the Journal of Lipid Research. And what they found was that a particular CLA isomer had reduced inflammation and adiposity in obese individuals. Now, what that means is it reduced the instance of gaining more adipose tissue, of gaining more fat. All that really means is we could have had one slight change in a cytokine or one slight change in pro-inflammatory responses in the body that triggered a different cascade. What they found within this study is ultimately what caused this decrease in fat accumulation was something to do with the white fat in the body. 
You see, we have brown fat, we have white fat. Brown fat is the fat that's naturally occurring in our body that increases thermogenesis, allows us to burn more fat through heat. Then we have white fat. White fat is just the insulating layer. It's just there for a little bit of extra energy and there to keep us warm. That's all there is to it. So what this particular CLA isomer did was change how we utilize white fat. So that's pretty interesting and that's pretty awesome in and of itself, but it may not be enough to totally decide to take CLA, especially when we consider that again, it's chemically altered. We're not getting it in a natural way. Now this next study I wanna talk about has to do with weight loss. And this isn't even one study. This is an aggregated 18 studies because a lot of the studies that have to do with CLA and weight loss are pretty inconclusive, especially when it comes down to human trials because most of the human trials don't even really exist. It's more mouse trials and rat trials, which hold some value, but they're not the entirety of what we want when we're looking at human utilization. So what they found was that there was a nice linear weight loss for the first six months of a modest amount. People were losing on average tenth of a pound or so a week. That's not bad, but it stopped after about six months and it started to plateau. Then they found there was no big change. So realistically, what probably happened was there a slight twist in the cytokine and inflammatory activity in the body, which made it so fatty acid oxidation and utilization just changed for a little bit. Sort of like if you were to just go from eating chicken breast all the time and then suddenly start eating turkey, you might see a change in your body. Fatty acid makeup changes, chemical makeup changes, your body composition's probably gonna change. But there's one more study and this one blew my hair back and quite honestly made it so that I don't even have much of an interest to take a CLA supplement unless it was naturally derived. Okay, this particular study was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, which I have my own personal beliefs on to begin with, with that organization, but for all intents and purposes, this study was pretty awesome because it was pretty dang big. It was a double blind placebo study that took a look at 60 overweight men that were suffering with metabolic syndrome. And they broke them into three different groups. They broke them into a group that took a specific trans 10 CIS 12 CLA. They broke them into a group that took a mix of CLA. And then they broke them into a group that took placebo. Well, what they found at the end of 12 weeks was that the men that ended up taking the actual CLA supplement that was the trans 10 CIS 12 had an increase in their C-reactive protein levels of 110%. C-reactive protein is the master indicator of how much inflammation you have going on in the body. If you have high CRP, it means you have high overall inflammation. So 110% increase and up to 578% increase in other pro-inflammatory cytokines and metabolites. So what does that mean? That means that CLA is still an omega-6, especially in its chemically altered artificial form, which therefore shows us that we have an increase in inflammation that ultimately with the study still ended up with an increase in insulin resistance in the patients as well, meaning that you had more of a propensity to become diabetic, more of a propensity to gain body fat, but worst of all, a lot more inflammation within the body. So I don't know what to honestly conclude from this. The simple fact of the matter is if you're looking to get CLA, you probably just need to be eating your whole sources of food. That's all there is to it. If you're getting it from a supplement, you're getting a chemically altered trans fat. That's not a heck of a lot better than the trans fats that you're gonna see at McDonald's or Wendy's. So for all there is to it, make sure you're eating your wholesome foods. And honestly, it's my opinion as of right now until more research comes out that you may just wanna save your money. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you in the next video.